we're the sponsor because we believe in a philosophy called No Limits. And No Limits is basically what you can dream, you can do. And uh, it applies absolutely to this kind of snowboarding. The time has come to crown champions for 97. Crested Butte Mountain, Colorado, the challenge. The best free riding snowboarders in the U.S., the challenger. The 97 U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championship. Sponsored by Sector Sport Watches. Brought to you by Paul Mitchell, professional salon products. And by Sprite, obey your thirst. Anytime you're dealing with any kind of steep rock, trees, anything's extreme, you can get hurt on flat, but I mean, anything like this, definitely extreme. When you're in this kind of venue and you have people staring at you and you're looking at that kind of train, you're looking down like that, it's hard to think and concentrate. You start flowing, it's instinct. When you're up there, it's a whole different, it's a whole different world up there because you have, you know, every move is critical and you have to think about it and it's, it's a mental game just as much as it is, you know, a physical game too, so. You could like know the mountain really well and you still don't know where you're going, you know. I think I'm going to huck myself off the world and see what happens. My mom says, don't do that. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to the unbelievably steep and sometimes dangerous terrain of Crested View Mountain Resort, Colorado. Today it's the 1997 Sector U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships. I'm Rod Elish, and along with me, Kevin Delaney, former world snowboard champ. And Kevin, for two years, this has been called the Extreme Championships, but now that word might be passe. We're all really. Well, the U.S. Extremes here is exactly that. This is a very radical, extreme contest. We have seen the word extreme tagged on to a number of different products in the marketing world, but it's events like this that made the word so popular. These riders come down the mountain with power and domination, getting down some of the steepest terrain in North America. It's free riding at its best, and it's competition at its finest. Well, the third member of our TV posse is 900 vertical feet above us in the start area. His name is Dave Bryson, and he has been in extreme competitions before. So, Dave, the question to you is why does someone enter and compete in a contest like this? This contest is a great way to see where these athletes are in their comfort zone. Local people like myself are used to riding this type of terrain, maybe never even felt comfortable in a half pipe or a conventional race course. Those kind of people come here, it's like a walk in their backyard. Bottom line, it's a true judge of technical merit versus free riding ability. And if the athlete can combine those two things, they're sure to move ahead in the contest. Rider ready, two, one, go. Go for it, Evan. Go for it. First order of business for the 97 Extreme Snowboard Championships is qualifying. 122 riders. Colorado, Utah, Maine, California, Canada, and Switzerland. Day one is a big chopping block designed to cut the field in half. The riders know it's time to put up or shut up, and they're choosing their lines. Technical, straight down, through the trees, or big air over the cliffs. Big air on qualifying day brought to you by Reno Air. 47 men and 18 women move on to day number two. We'll crank it up when we come back. Welcome back to the 97 Sector Sport Watch U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championship. Ready for day two of competition on a run called Headwall. Go big, go fast, or go home. <laughs> oh. I did have some high expectations, um, but you know, stuff happens. <laughs> Big or go home. Big one. Yeah, you gotta see the, the skinniest, tightest little line and then put yourself up there and do it. A total of 65 riders make the cut for two runs on head wall. First on course, Paul Elkins from Santa Cruz, California, currently tied for first. The sole surfer from Santa Cruz always rides consistent and strong. Paul went to school in nearby Gunnison and is showing the other competitors that now he is the teacher. Paul flashes the tightest lines to be counted on for a few surprises. One of the things to note on day number two, lots of fresh snow, maybe hiding a few rocks. Definitely making for some softer landing.
Next up, a fast-rising young stud here on the Colorado snowboard scene, Lucas Demlo from right here in Crested Butte. Charging hard to make a name for himself, using his local knowledge of this mountain to impress the judges with clean lines. Here he kind of detoured from the extreme section for some soul-riding powder mission. Everything the judges want to see, fast, fluid, in control. Now on course number 40, Jason Troth from Glenwood Springs, Colorado, second here last year. It's redemption time for Jason Troth. He led the whole competition last year just to see it evaporate on the final day. Here he works a tight line, using that fresh pow to throw up some spray. Jason is a man to watch. Big, strong, and powerful with a lot of local mountain knowledge. Nice air setting the pace and some old school nose wheelie ride to finish it up. A total of two runs for our competitors today on day number two of the Sector U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championship. This is the second run for Ken Perkins from here in Crested Butte. Nowhere to go, but with Ken Perkins, he'll figure it out. KP, known to clean up the competition, with big solid air and clean landings. Ken Perkins also, extreme local knowledge, paying off big dividends here at this competition. Now on course on head wall, 45, Christian Robertson, 14th in the 96 extremes and a teacher by profession. He is definitely giving us a lesson in solid free riding here and a nice mixed bag of tricks he's showing us. Solid run, good form, difficulty of line, very fluid. One of the best runs we've seen here on day two. Next up, Seth Westcott, a 20-year-old pro from Farmington, Maine. Also chases Gates as a racer and smokes in the half pipe. Different for me being from the East Coast. I don't get to see stuff like this very much. So it's cool. It's a good change of pace. Everyone's pushing it. Everyone's going off. It's pretty fun to watch. An incredible rider in any event. Westcott is definitely a name to remember. At 20 years old, he's already been a national champion and consistently places in the top 20 on the Pro Tour. And in 16th year in the 95 U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships. Well, 18 women have qualified for the day two runoff, and the best nine will move on to the championship day. This is Jenny Milbrath from here in Crested Butte. This girl can ride. Already two firsts this year in a border cross and a big air. She got third at the extreme last year, and she is ready to better that finishing place. Sweet pow ride for Jenny Milbrath, one of the top rides of the day for the female. Now the defending women's champion at the U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships, Janet Antrim. Janet Antrim's got a lot of local support. Huge fan club out turning her on today. She's got a lot of pressure, though, to repeat. Veteran competitor. She had some scary moments in Alaska. Definitely maturing as an athlete and a competitor. And setting the pace for the women here at the U.S. Snowboarding Extremes. Already this year, a first and a second on the Big Mountain Extreme Tour. Win or lose, one of the nicest people who ride sideways you will ever meet. Now slicing and dicing Christy Ross from Summit County, Colorado. Cut and rip and put it back together again. Christy, a physical therapy tech in Frisco. A great overall rider. She's competed in racing and half-pipe events as well as these extreme contests. She's definitely leading the invasion from Summit County. Strong field of riders out there working together to better the Crested Butte locals. Likes to hike the backcountry and boards. Well suited to this terrain and competition on a snowboard. And our final female, another Summit County ripper, Julie Jules Larson from Silverthorne, Colorado. She calls herself a ripping mountain woman. Towards the Arapaho Basin every day, great extreme mountain up there, and she has put a lot of time in training. Very smooth style and a great smile to boot. I'd like to call it extreme. She prefers to call it venture ride. She's getting her wish today with the Freshies. That run, one of the two best runs of the day, puts Larson into the lead. On the parade into the final day. Roth and Elkins won two after two days and a three-way tie for third. For the women, Larson and Rost on top with defending champ Janet Antrim currently in sixth. 20 points back of Larson, but still with a shot. We'll be right back.
It's Crunch 2, the most exciting extreme sports crashes ever caught on tape. Available now for only $14.95. Call today, 1-800-721-6120 to receive your copy of Crunch 2 and feel the pain. Also available, Crunch 1 for only $14.95. Or order both Crunch 1 and Crunch 2 for only $19.95. Again, that's 1-800-721-6120 for Crunch 2. Welcome back to Crested Butte, Colorado for the Sector No Limits U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships. All right, two days of competition out of the way. We've whittled our field to the top 30 riders, and it comes down to this. Two runs on staircase, the run right behind us, 900 vertical feet, an average pitch of 43 degrees. Kevin, who are you looking for? After these three days of incredible competition and the cumulative point system that's being used here, the riders standing out for the men's field are Jason Troth and Paul Elkins, both with a lot of local knowledge. That means four years or more riding in these conditions. They are trained and ready to go. And for the women, two ladies out of Summit County who've been working real hard to get to the final day, Julie Larson in first and Christy Rost in second. But anything can happen on the final day, as Dave Bryson knows well. He's been in the final day of competition for extreme snowboarding. Let's go to the top and find out what the mindset is. The last day is just that. It's the competitor's last chance to get into the winner's bracket. The competition with the points is very tough getting in to the top three slots. This course, steeplechase, very difficult. All the way down, rocks, cliffs, steeps and trees that the riders have to maneuver in and around to accomplish their goals. The rider who does that the best is going to show through to be today's champion for sure. On day two, we're on the top of the world on a run called the Headwall, but for the finals, we're moving over to the staircase. 45 degree pitch, 900 feet of vertical, very challenging. First up, defending champion Janet Antrim going into the final day in sixth place, 20 points behind. We'll see what happens. I guess I like the snow and everything is all good. It's a great day, even though it's cloudy. I'm going to try. We'll see what happens. I got two rounds. You never know what happens. She has got her work cut out for her, but when Janet Antrim's around, everything is all good. What I like about Janet's style is the smooth, controlled, no arms flailing around, keeping the wheels on the ground, and charging down the fall line. She already laid down the best of the day in run number one. This also a hot run to put her on top of the time being. Still, posse of riders to go. Day two leader Julie Larson all smiles in the start area, despite only fourth best in the first run. I can go for it today. Uh, the competition's been really great all week. Really tough riders this week. Um, just gonna take some strong turns, some big air. Pull through, we're gonna keep it. <laughs> Jules taking a nice steep line here, looks very difficult. I like her control, fluidity, but I think she needs to add a little bit more aggressiveness if she wants to claim this year's championship title. Christy Ross working on her mental game in the start. Slim one point lead over Antrim after the first run, competing despite an agonizing leg injury suffered earlier in the year. I'm just real happy to be where I am right now. I didn't think I'd be able to ride for the rest of the season and haven't had surgery yet, and here I am, second place so far, so couldn't ask for more, but good two runs right now. Christy taking a very aggressive line through the steep conditions. This is definitely gonna cost her in control points, but she has had such an aggressive line, she just might outweigh that small fall there. Well, a gutsy performance by Ross, but only the third best second run of the day. Not enough to overtake Antrim, our new leader. One rider left to go in the women's field, Jenny Milbrath from right here in Crested View. Jenny needs to pull out all the stops to move towards the crown here. She needs an aggressive line right down the fall line. Jenny and Milbrath. a few surprises would really help. She needs to throw some air to claim this title. A solid run down the fall line for Jenny, but not nearly as aggressive as she needs to be to win this championship. My last run, I wasn't too happy with it, but you know, I did the best I could. I didn't really know where I was going, and uh, the, the snow wasn't as good as I had expected. The judges looking for more, but they're not gonna get it. Janet Antrim with a comeback to win it, the second year in a row. I'm psyched, I've been having a good year. I've been traveling a lot, and it's nice to do something at home, but even though there's this pressure, it's, you know, Good crowd, good scene, great contest, and had a lot of fun with it. 
I ended up getting some great snow out of the deal. <laughs> Dead Bob shoots pretty fresh. Congratulations to Janet Andrum, who defends her U.S. Extreme Snowboarding title. 729 points, a scant half point ahead of Rock. Larson is third. The men's final, just around the corner. Hang tight. The rugged and spectacular Elk Mountain surrounding Crested Butte, Colorado. The backdrop of the 97th Sector U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships. And we're ready for the men's finale. But first, a point of view look at the staircase run, courtesy of competitor Pat Wild. And we're on our judging criteria with head judge Ryan Delaney. Tell me a little bit about the criteria that you'd use to judge these competitors. Well, we actually use five criteria. The first one being aggressiveness. And what we're looking for there is really how hard they're charging down the mountain. The second one would be form. The third one would be fluidity, or how they're carrying themselves down the mountain from point A to point B. The next one would be degree of line, or degree of difficulty. And again, it's, uh, it's the choice between taking the easy way down or taking the really scary, more difficult way down. The last one would be probably the most important one, and that's control. And I think uh, at these extreme contests especially, Anyone can go up there and huck themselves off a cliff and, and make the crowd scream, but if they're not landing it or if they're tumbling through the trees, um, it's not going to help their health or their scores. First up for the men, bib number six, Ken Perkins, currently in a three-way tie for third, heading into our final day competition. Just try to keep it solid, try to stay on my feet. Good solid turns, mix it up a little air, and try to get in under the time limit. Very consistent competitor in Ken Perkins. He knows all the tricks. Here he enters a very difficult section, and unlike other competitors, he just moves right through it. No hesitation from Ken. Excellent run for Ken Perkins to separate that three-way tie. But next on course, Christian Robertson. Tied for third again, heading into the final run. It's definitely a local show today. There's a lot of guys that live here that are riding and just going to try and find some nooks and crannies that no one else is going to. You helped me out a lot yesterday. Hope you do it again today. Christian has a real gift for line selection, and that's one of the most difficult aspects of competing in an extreme event. He was a little off on his first run, but his second was so powerful, proved to be one of the best of the day. Well, winter or summer here in Crested Butte, always plenty of adventure thanks to Sector Sport Watches. Sector No Limits Center. No Limits is essentially a philosophy, and it, at the heart of No Limits is something that says, we, whatever we dream, we can do. And life around us constantly seeks to impose limits on us, and uh, what we try and do is to tell people that they don't have to stay within those limits. The idea of the No Limit Centers is that we provide a place, or places, there are 15 of them around the world, where anybody can come, and we're just as happy that a 72-year-old uh, grandmother uh, explores her limits by going whitewater rafting as we are by some 24-year-old uh, hotshot going ice climbing. If you look around Crested Butte, it's not, hard, it's not difficult to, uh, to understand why there is everything here. Uh, whether you want to go skiing or snowboarding in the winter or ice climbing, uh, in the summer, rock climbing, mountain biking, whitewater canoeing, uh, there's almost uh, no limit to the kinds of activities you can do here in Crested Butte. Don't fly away. We'll be right back with the final three competitors at the U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championship. Yeah. Drum roll, please. This is it. The Sector U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championship. Three competitors with one run apiece, and we will crown our champion for 1997. Now on course, day two leader Jason Brock. He found himself in a similar position last year, only to finish second behind Chris Engels. Gonna roll down the hill, some snappy turns, try to uh, catch a little bit of air, just ride strong and put it through the finish. Jason definitely needs to take some chances here on this final run. Normally just pedal to the metal, full speed down the mountain. Here he seems to be hesitating, ending up at some stopping points here and a very difficult section buried in the trees. And tumbling his way down the mountain is not gonna help him win the crown this year. Jason definitely getting stuck in a tight section, and you can see the frustration right there. Now on course, Seth Westcott, bib 30, tied with Christian Robertson and Ken Perkins for third, coming into the day. A great heated battle here for second, for first, this three-way tie, putting the pressure on all the competitors. Seth Westcott is definitely the man for the challenge, been riding clean and fast. 
this whole competition. This is his last chance to go for the crown. He's worked himself into a difficult section. Big air there off the cliff band. Moving fast to the finish. Great weekend he's had. And our final competitor for the 1997 U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships, Paul Wilkins from Santa Cruz, California, focused on this one run for all the marbles. Trailing Jason Schwab by 13 points coming into today. And here on the final run, he has shown that the training has been paying off. He's traveled around the world in preparation for this event. And right here we see the aggressive style, the difficult line choice, and the fluidity that has kept him on top all throughout this event. First moment of hesitation here as he enters an extremely steep and rugged section. He needs to take chances to win this title, and this is the shining moment. You can see from this view just how steep and radical these conditions are here at Crested Butte. And if Paul can make it through this section cleanly, maybe pull an air out at the bottom, this could be his day. Tense moments for Paul Elkins. Appears to be hooking it all together here on his final run at the 1997 U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships. And yes, that's going to do it. Paul Elkins of Santa Cruz, California is our champion for 1997. Paul Elkins, tell us about your run. Are you happy with it? Well, I had a little um, different plan for the end there. I wanted to kind of cut more skiers left and do a little drop at the top of that chute there, but it didn't quite happen. It was really tricky in there. And it's hard to get over to it, so I had to kind of scramble through those rocks. Congratulations to Paul Elkins, our champion for 97. The final standings after three days and five runs. Elkins with 924 points. That's Ross, 920.5. The 1997 Sector U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championship from Crested Butte brought to you by Sector Sport Watches. And by Paul Mitchell, professional salon products. And Sprite, obey your thirst. Well, that's all from Crested Butte for this time. Until next time, I'm Rod Elisha. For Kevin Delaney and David Bryson, remember, ride fast, fly high, and have fun. So long, everybody. This has been another wild ride, courtesy of JSP International Video Productions.